Hey, friend, Chris Van Deviver here from WhyLogicProRules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro 10. Now, the last couple of weeks have been pretty surreal, but one amazing thing that has just happened is that Apple, for the first time that I know of, now has a trial version of Logic Pro 10, which anyone can try out for 90 days, three months. This is unheard of. If you wanted to try out Logic, you had to basically try out GarageBand and then eventually decide to spend the money to try out Logic Pro 10. But now there is a 90 day free trial for all of us. So it felt like to me that this is a perfect opportunity to get back to basics. So for the next five days, I'm gonna be posting a video each day, Monday through Friday, of a quick start guide to Logic Pro 10. This is the bare bones, the core essential things that you need to know so you can get right down to creating music and Logic. I think this will be tremendous value to you, the brand new user of Logic Pro 10. So congrats on checking it out. Let's dig into this. Now, when you first open Logic, you are most likely going to be presented with a question. And that question is, are you a beginner to Logic or are you pretty familiar with Logic? Now, if you answer that question, I'm a beginner, this is the way Logic is gonna look for you. We have sort of these like wood panels on the left and right hand sides. The feature set is a little more restricted because it's designed to look a lot like GarageBand, but you still have much more features available to you even in this more GarageBand looking logic. I mean, we have a dedicated mixer. We have more extensive control over the software instruments and plugins. Now, one other element when you first open logic is you're more likely going to see a window that offers you something more like this. Now, logic has a variety of templates to help you get started quickly. Perhaps you are a producer or a beat maker and you make mostly hip hop and you know with the way that pop music is going these days, maybe pop music. So maybe the hip hop template would be a really great starting point for you because it provides you with drum kit sounds and synths just out of the box. Or perhaps you're more of an electronic producer. So again, more drum kits, synths, the tools that will help you create music quickly. Or if you're more of a songwriter or guitar player, you can open a template with drums, bass and guitar amps available right out of the gate. And if you're working more with orchestral or music for picture, there are templates for that. And multi-track is if you want to record your own band or somebody else's band. All of the routing, all of the plugins are set up for you in a very helpful way. I also wanna point out that in the demo project section, we actually have access to a major label artist back his hit song Colors that was produced by famed music producer, Greg Kirsten. You actually can open this project up and all of the 100 plus tracks you can dissect, you can solo, you can check out what they did. I love this. This is the type of thing I love to dissect and try to understand, like, how are the pros doing things? So don't overlook this particular demo project. But for now, we're going to open a brand new empty project. So once I open a new project, I'm presented with a couple different options. Logic will always prompt you if there's no tracks in your main window to choose a track type to open. Now, starting from the left here, we have software instruments. These are the instruments that are included in Logic. So if we go in the drop down menu here, we have Alchemy, which is a powerhouse synth, drum kit designer that is acoustic drum sounds, a variety of different synths, the EXS24, which is the famed sampler in Logic, the retro synth, studio horns and strings, Ultra Beat, which is a beat machine, the vintage B3 organ, vintage clav, electric piano, and Mellotron. These types of instruments are performed using either a dedicated MIDI keyboard that you plug in via USB or another connection type into your Mac, or we have a musical typing keyboard, which I'll show you momentarily. Next up in our list, we have an audio track. And audio tracks you record to using a microphone either plugged into a dedicated audio interface that's plugged into your Mac or using a USB style microphone. And then you just select the style input that you need and you're good to go. We also have dedicated audio tracks for recording bass or guitar. Logic comes with a ton of guitar amp simulations and bass amp simulations. This style of audio track, you would just plug in your guitar into a dedicated line input on your audio interface, and the interface is plugged into your Mac. And lastly, we have Drummer. And Drummer is quite literally an AI performer, a variety of different sounds from rock music to hip hop, electronic to singer songwriter and even Latin style music. And Logic will just populate your projects with predetermined drum performances. It's super cool. But for now, we're gonna start with the software instrument track and I'm just gonna pick the electric piano sound here. 
Now to play the electric piano sound, it's pretty easy. You either have a USB keyboard that you've plugged into your Mac and nine times out of 10, Logic is going to recognize that there's a keyboard plugged in and you'll be able to play immediately. Or we have the option for musical typing. Now, if we go up to the window menu here and go down to show musical typing, or you can use the key command, command K, we're presented with this keyboard here that allows us to use our Mac keyboard to actually play the instruments in Logic. So if I press A on my keyboard, I can play. We can move up and down the different octaves by using Z or X. And then we can reduce the velocity of our performance or increase it. And velocity is just a fancy word for either softer or louder performance. So let me dredge this down a bit. Bring it up. Perfect. And then across the top here, we have pitch bend. So we can bend the pitch of the different notes. And we have different modulation types as well, using keys four through eight, or we can turn off the modulation. Pretty easy. And if you have a dedicated MIDI keyboard, then you can just use the pitch or mod wheel on your keyboard and adjust the octave or the velocity via your keyboard and performance. Okay. That's pretty easy to get set up with a software instrument. But how about audio recordings, such as a USB microphone or microphone plugged into your audio interface? Well, in that case, I'm gonna wanna go and create a new audio track. You can either use Option Command N to open up this dialog, or you can go to Track, and we have a variety of different options, either new tracks, new audio track, software, drummer track. So I'm gonna pick new audio track. So now I need to get set up with my input to my microphone. If I open the mixer here using key command X, or if you go to this button right here, it shows a series of sliders, which is the mixer. And then for my audio track here, you can see that my voice is talking through the audio track and the input has been set to my microphone, which happens to be input one of my interface. Now, if you don't see these options, that's because you're gonna have to get set up with your audio interface in the audio preferences. So we're going to navigate to Logic Pro 10, Preferences, and then Audio. So we're presented with a couple options. Usually your input device and your output device will be the same device. In my case, I needed to set the output device to the built-in output because I'm recording a video. But usually I would select my audio interface or USB microphone. In this case, I use a Presonus Quantum. It would be both the input and output. Now, the next most important element that you need to concern yourself with is the I.O. buffer size. The I.O. buffer is like a waiting room at a doctor's office. You know, when you go to see a doctor, you walk in, you talk to the secretary, and then they tell you to sit down and wait until the doctor is available to see you. Now, Logic is a very hefty program, and there's a lot going on. And your Mac is trying to manage a thousand different processes all at the same time. It's trying to manage the heating and cooling of your Mac system. It's trying to manage the different programs that run in the background. You know, should it sleep? Should it stay awake? So on and so forth. So there's a lot going on. By setting the I.O. buffer size to different settings, we're kind of telling Logic and our Mac how to prioritize our obsession with Logic. So the smaller the buffer size, the less latency we experience, and the higher the buffer size, the more latency we experience. Now, latency is a fancy word for delay. Now, latency doesn't really matter when you're just mixing and playing around in Logic, but when you're trying to record, either using your MIDI keyboard or a microphone, latency becomes a lot more problematic. For example, if I plug in my microphone, and I set my I.O. buffer size to the largest size, what I'm going to hear through my speakers or my headphones is a delay from my microphone to my headphones. I'll say something and it'll almost be like the words are coming a little after when I speak them. And that's very distracting and problematic. But for now, let's try it out so you can get a sense of what I'm talking about. So I'll apply these changes. And next up, I'm gonna select my audio track. And then this button right here is the input monitoring button. When I click on it, we'll be able to hear my microphone through Logic. What you'll also notice is once I do this and I start talking, you're gonna hear that sort of double image of my voice because the sound of my voice is traveling a little slower through my logic system. Check it out. Now, now you, you should, should be experiencing, experiencing a, bit a bit of a, of a delay, delay of my, of my voice, voice which, which is, is very, very distracting. distracting. Now imagine that delay while you're trying to record yourself playing or imagine a delay while you're recording yourself playing on the musical typing. It's just, it's problematic. So instead, 
we're going to go back to the audio preferences, audio, and we're going to set the buffer size to 32, which is the smallest buffer size. Hit apply. Now check it out. Okay, so there's way less of a delay. It still sounds a little weird, but that's only because I'm recording my voice at the same time that my voice is traveling through logic. It's kind of going through two different systems. In your experience, it should sound A-OK. -okay. Now, the only problem with setting a small buffer size, such as 32 samples, is, is your Mac might not be able to handle such a small size. And you'll start to hear pops and clicks, and those pops and clicks will even be recorded into the audio when you record. So I suggest starting with a buffer size of 128 and see how that works for you. If you don't experience any sort of delay in your headphones or monitors, then perfect. If it still seems a little delayed, then I suggest kind of paring down. And if it seems like you're still getting pops and clicks and things aren't working quite right, then I suggest going a little slower, like 256. And then when I'm not recording, I always set my IO buffer size to 1024, just across the board. So when I'm mixing or I'm playing with plugins or effects or just editing, I don't need to have this buffer size set to a small buffer size. All that's left to do is, is to record enable your track, turn on input monitoring so you can hear yourself through Logic, and then just hit record. And then you can record yourself playing. And once you're done recording, just hit stop. Check it out. We're recording. Perfect. Now tomorrow we're going to actually dig into the different features of Logic and quickly record a riff, something along the lines of 30 seconds, and then we'll dissect how awesome Logic is for quickly producing and making music. See you then.